and uh, welcome back and if you're new here welcome to the channel now obviously my channel covers a, a wide raft of topics or I try to you know relating f to outdoors hiking you know exploration on the moors footpaths you know in the woods and just a few day-to-day -day things I get up to or I'm you know got happening around me now you can see here I'm back to using my heat gun and jig system that I've manufactured to straighten my hiking sticks in their production it's not something I really wanted to go back to but due to the storms and what's happening with the weather I haven't been able to get out and get my fire pit going to produce steam to use steam to straighten sticks I've got some videos on that further back and uh, I demonstrated how I achieved that that was a much superior faster and better um, production method to get straighter sticks than what I'm doing here it's viable it does work but you have to heat a stick up and do each individual bend and allow it to cool to set off before you then go on to do another uh, bend in the same stick and that can take 15 minutes you know by the time you heat it up jig it put it under pressure allow the stick to cool down or the wood and then undo it heat it up do another bend and so so on so forth um yeah so i've been caught short i've had a load of sticks that have gone out and um, obviously it's coming up to Christmas so there's a bit of a rush on we've got a three-day craft fair coming up and I've got to get a load of stock together so you know hence I'm in the workshop doing it this way till I can get back out and get that fire pit going which will be my number one task but I need to get this you know some uh, stick straight and so I can start working at least on some of them to get the numbers up for the sale If you look down through this uh, piece of hazel here, which I've straightened, you will see those three um, you know, crosses. Now those crosses are placed where I want the bends to be. And as you can see, this stick here has required three um, efforts to get this stick to a straightness I'm happy with, or I want to use this stick to, um, you know, to get it to what I believe will be the best result for this stick and as you can see and work out from what I've said that can be about 40 minutes work uh, doing it by this method whereas if I'm using a um, steamer the whole stick becomes uh, hot enough for me to put on a roller on that jig and just twist it and uh, bend it and I can bend this stick into shape within just a few moments and put it in the woodshed cooling off uh, this method is extremely long-winded but at the moment it's what I've got to do so I've got a piece of hazel in there you can see I've already straightened it there and just inside there you'll see another cross there and I've got the pressure being applied below the cross to straighten it so I try to have concurrent activity so it's not totally wasted time and as you can see this one here has got a real bend in it and um, you can see I've already established where I need to place the uh, jack to give it its uh, mechanical straightening uh, force below it but that's got quite a bend on it as you can see uh, the stick has been cut to the rough size I want but um, yeah I don't go any further with any more of the manufacturer because you know doing it under this method there's a bigger degree of failure ie um, splitting of the wood or cracking so you know it's not the most sympathetic way and you can lose uh, pieces of wood if you're not careful and indeed you know annoyingly I've had some really beautiful pieces of wood I've just pushed it that little bit too far to straighten and you hear that crack 
and then you know somewhere along it it's gone even if you can't see it you know you know it's gone somewhere so um, it's not that sympathetic steam is a lot more sympathetic to the actual straightening process but like I said it is viable and it's used by a lot of manufacturers but um, yeah I can't wait to get out get out and get that steamer going again uh, with the steamer you see I can get possibly you know four to six pieces uh, heating up and straightened at the same time before putting another few uh, pieces in and walking away and having a cup of tea. So I've just taken this piece out of the jack and I can see there's another little bend here I want to take out of. Um, I don't always over straighten my sticks because quite simply like I said before it kind of fits my folklore brand and it's something from the wood um, you know something a little bit rural and something a little bit um, like I said untamed but I do like to achieve a usable straightness to the actual stick itself um, so yeah I'm just looking down through here now and I can see a bend I'm going to bring my fingers up to where I want to mark it and it'll be my top thumb over here which you'll see which I'll place on the part I want to actually put the cross and I always double check and I believe I'm on the mark there so I've changed fingers I can see I want to place a vent there you see uh, that's where the cross is there and you'll probably just see there is a slight a slight curve there it's, it's an annoyance I could have left it and it wouldn't have been out of keeping but I've just got the feeling just looking at it that it needs removing so I've got my heat gun I'm just warming the wood up to start with and you have to do this very gently just overheating the wood can actually weaken it to the point it will split and it becomes even more trickier if you're trying to do a stick where you're leaving the bark on you do not want to damage the bark by heating it splitting it or bubbling it off or indeed weakening it but these sticks here are going to be stripped of their bark so I have the luxury of not worrying about the bark too much. But as you can see, I'm just working it round to get some initial heat into that wood. And from here, I've got a little bit of a race against time. Right, I've got it warm. I don't want it to lose its residual heat. I've got my protection underneath. I'm going to place it directly under the cross slide it in on top of the jack get it central and then I'm going to put my other protection on the actual side pieces of the stick they will carry some of the load as well so they will need protecting there get the next one you don't want to crimp and damage the pieces of wood either side. So with that in position, I can now start getting some of the uh, jack wound up and started applying some of the pressure. Just making sure none of my plastic sleeves aren't biting into the wood. I can then start bringing up the actual uh, pressure on the jack. And you're always looking down the actual stick itself trying to align everything and trying to apply the pressure so you get the bend either way you want it as well right I've just got some pressure on it there and I'm just going to put a bit more heat directly over the cross not too much all I'm doing now is transferring some more heat into the wood to allow it to become more el well, elastic in effect yep 
Yeah, it's just slightly uncomfortable to the hand. And I'm winding it up now. And I'm looking along the actual stick to gauge how much. Sometimes you may have to just give it that fraction more a quarter of a turn than you want to allow for the snap back of the wood. It won't come all the way back, but when you release the pressure, there quite often is just a little bit of easing and contracting of the wood. So you may have to go past that point slightly to allow it to do that, to get that straightness you're after. But um, yeah, now it's basically a case I've got to wait for it to cool down. And as you can see in here, it's just too windy for me to actually get this fire pit going and be out here and actually straighten these sticks. But once the weather does uh, cooperate, I will spend the whole day getting a big batch of sticks straightened. So just to demonstrate, when I was jacking this up just a moment ago and I got it to its actual well desired uh, position, as in straightness, and I was happy with uh, what I wear and what I wanted this stick to set like. I just applied a little bit more heat with the heat gun over like this. Just moving it so I don't get burn and cook off in one spot. it to see if it feels just slightly uncomfortable to the hand always be careful health and safety and everything like that you don't want to burn yourself and obviously because it's wood if you get it too hot even with a hot air gun there is a danger of uh, you causing a fire so you have to be very careful I mean everything about this is kind of a little bit common sense and just being careful but yeah now, like I've just explained earlier, I've got to let that set off. Well, I stopped for tea and uh, I had a few errands to do. So I got all that done and out of the way and I'm back in the workshop and I'm straightening. I'll be here, I'm guessing, for another couple of hours. And um, then I shall make my way indoors. I possibly, in amongst everything else I have to do tomorrow, probably got tomorrow to straighten... The quantity I want to continue with my crafting, at least to cover me for the craft fair that's coming up. Now, the purpose of this um, recording, I suppose, was to show you how it's done, but also the context in which it's done, which is basically <laughs> over a long period of time. It's not a fast operation. And also... It's demonstrated to me, now I've run out of stock of my blank sticks, which are the ones already pre-straightened so I can go straight into a crafting situation, that I need to pull my finger out and when there is good weather, just get a load of these uh, blanks ready so I don't have to be doing it this way again. I don't mind it, I mean it's therapeutic. I get plenty of opportunity to let my mind drift and wander and think about things. But ultimately, you know, it's not the most productive uh, use of time when I know there is a faster and better way with the steamer. So, yeah, um, a lesson learnt. And, um, yeah, I'm about to uh, get another piece done. So I'm going to draw this to a close. I hope you enjoyed just seeing how it's done. And, um, yeah. This is Andy, all the best and I hope to catch you out on the trail.